stop buying large USB thumb drives to move large files. Just stop it. Let me tell you why. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be talking about transferring large files or large amounts of data back and forth between computers using thumb drives or USB or USB-C. We're going we're gonna to talk about uh, the best ways to do it. So we all know what a USB thumb drive is. They are fantastic devices compared to some of the options that we had uh, when I was younger, like floppy drives and zip disks and stuff like that. Much better USB, USB 2, USB 3, all fantastic technology. But there becomes a limitation to how much you can transfer and how fast you can transfer. So I've got here a, a PNY 64 gigabyte. This is a, a dual uh, USB. It's got a USB C on one side, it's got a USB A on the other side, and this is a USB 3. Uh, Point one, so up to five gigabytes, uh, gigabits per second transfer speed is is what that uh, equates to, depending on the interface itself, uh, the computer that you're plugging into, the speed of the the uh, chip that's in here, the speed of the memory, the speed of the memory controller. So all that's dependent. So your your mileage is obviously going to vary, but as according to the spec. That's the uh, the marketing hype that they give you. We know it's not going to be that fast. So I'm going to offer up to you an alternative to the good old-fashioned thumb drive. Let me tell you about it. So even as the technology gets uh, cheaper and cheaper, thumb drives are getting cheaper per megabyte or cheaper per gigabyte, uh, other technology is getting cheaper too. So we've got here a M.2 NVMe SSD enclosure. Now this one is one of many that you can pick from. I picked this one because of a couple reasons. One, it's tool free, which means you don't need screwdrivers or anything like that to, uh, to get in and out of it, which is nice. Uh, two, it's got the high speed 10 gigabits of uh, transfer over USB-C. It uses NVMe drives and SATA drives. So it will take both the M key and the B and M key. So I've got a video that talks about all the different keys and all the different drive technologies and interfaces and stuff. I'll link that down below. You can check that out if you want to geek out on some uh, some memory type stuff, some hard drive type connections. But in this case, just know that if you've got an NVMe drive or a or an SSD SATA drive, you can probably put it in here. It's probably going to work. So let's take a look at the uh, the device itself. So here it is outside of the the box and another reason I chose it is because it's got a built-in cable so no cable to to plug into it which means no cable to lose at some point so it's built right into it it tucks away when you're not using it so that's awfully handy and like I said before this is truly tool free so it's got just a little access door here that lets you get into the uh, the drive area so this has, right now, I've got an NVMe drive in there. It's just a 128 gigabyte drive, and it just plugs right in there pretty easily. It, it comes with a little rubber grommet thing to, to press it in. I didn't put that in yet, but if you're going to secure this in for good, you just pop it in there, and then you pop that rubber grommet, and it will keep it down in place. And then you just slap the door on it, and you're good to go. This thing's ready to go with you. This, in, in, in fact, is, I think, a, aluminum, and so it's pretty rugged. It feels pretty pretty good in the hand. It feels pretty sturdy. Because it's solid state, you can drop it. It's not going to hopefully break anything. It's not going to break a, a spinning disc, at least, like some of those portable hard drives that you can buy for, for cheap. But let's, let's talk about the, the difference in speed between this and the good old-fashioned thumb drive. So let's do some tests. All right, so I've got a MacBook Air here. It's a 2020 MacBook Air with the Thunderbolt ports on the side, the USB-C ports on the side. I plugged in the enclosure um, right to one of those ports. And if we go into Finder, we'll see that this thing is just plug and play. 
here's the drive right here, the NVMe drive, and I labeled it when I formatted it. So I just formatted it completely, it's completely empty, and labeled it NVMe. So we're going to take this YouTube video over here, which is 11 gigabytes, 11 gigabytes of pure entertainment for you guys. I'm just going to drag it right over into the drive, and we're going to wait for that to show up. And it shows that it's transferring over 11.53 gigabytes, and it's got less than a minute to go. So let me shut up and let it fast forward a little bit. All right, and there it is. And I will take now that it's done and put about right here, I will put the amount of seconds that it took. It was less than a minute. So I will superimpose that on the video when I edit it, and and we will compare and contrast that in a second. But first of all, I want to tell you that's the write speed, right? I was writing from the computer to this. Generally speaking, the write speed of a drive, an external drive, is going to be the slower of the two. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete this file that I just dragged on there off the desktop. Let me just move that to trash. And now I'm going to read the same file off of the external drive and write it onto the computer after I accidentally double click on it. Now this speed should be quicker than the write speed writing onto the disk and sure enough it is faster than I could even finish talking about it it's done copying. So that's pretty darn impressive. That's 11 gigabytes of, of data. All right, so let me, uh, let me clean this drive off, and I'm going to plug in the USB drive, which has a USB-C connector and is rated at USB-C 3.1, and we're going to see how this compares. All right, so here we go. I've got the USB drive plugged in here into the same port, using the USB-C connector that's built into this PNY USB thumb drive. We'll open up Finder, and here it is. I, I went ahead and formatted it. I called it USB, and it's formatted as the same Mac external drive. So we see that it's empty here, 61 gigs free. So I'm going to take this same file, the same 11 gig file, and drag it over, and we'll see how that works. And it's off to the races. Now, while this is copying over, and I'm going to have to fast forward some of it, I know that ahead of time. While it's copying over, let me tell you real quick that the spec sheet for this, despite the interface being high speed, 5 gigabit, the spec sheet for the read and write is only like 140 megabytes. So that's, that's a big difference. You've got a very fast interface here but it's just the limitation of the drive itself. Now that's why these things are so cheap. So let's go ahead and let this copy over and I'll come back in a couple days and catch back up with you. Woo, and there we go. About 13 minutes and 30 seconds, about 13 and a half minutes to copy that into that drive. And this is the speed that it took to write so hopefully the, the read speed will be a little, a little bit quicker. So let's go ahead and do that same thing again. We're going to delete this. And we're going to drag this back to the desktop. And let's get the stopwatch ready. Three, two, one, go. So it looks like the approximation is a little bit quicker, but I'm going to go ahead and let this burn, and I'll be back in a minute. All right, so that was definitely a lot quicker, about a minute and a half versus the 13 and a half minutes that it took 
to write onto the drive. Now, if you were only copying stuff from thumb drives to computers, then yeah, that's that's not too bad. But the data obviously has to get on here somehow in the first place. So the the write speed to these things are just horrible, drastically different than the write speed of one of these. So I did this on this Mac. The same results would happen if we did it on a Windows machine, assuming it's got the same type of USB-C or Thunderbolt port. So let me go ahead and clean off this drive, and then we're going to talk about, now that we see the, the uh, advantages, let's talk about the price difference between the two. Okay, got them both cleaned off again. So I think I, I proved myself of showing the, the speed difference between a USB-C, even if it is USB-C 3.1 versus an NVMe enclosure. But let's talk about the price difference. So these thumb drives, like I said, they're getting cheaper and cheaper all the time. Uh, I would guess that this one, if we were going to compare apples to apples, so if you got this in a 128 gig version, a USB thumb drive with a USB-C adapter with 128 gigs, I would say would be somewhere in the $20 to $40 range, depending on how good a deal. $20 would be a pretty good deal on it. $40 would be probably retail price. So $20 to $40 for this. Now let's talk about this guy. So this enclosure here cost me about $15 uh, right on Amazon. And it was probably on sale, so let's say 15 to 20. The drive that's inside there, well, it cost me nothing because I already had it. But if you do get a 128 gig NVMe drive, it's gonna be right in the $20 range on, on Amazon. You may even have an extra drive from an old computer sitting around and that, in that case, it's a no-brainer. Go ahead and get this. So even if you got the enclosure and the drive, uh, paid 20 bucks a piece for both of them, then you're looking at 40 bucks. So price difference-wise, yes, if you get one of these guys on sale, it's going to be a little bit cheaper. But for me, that extra couple dollars, or if you get a good deal on, on these, or if you have a drive sitting around somewhere, it is just an absolute no-brainer. I've used this type of enclosure for all my video editing now. I'm shooting this right here, right on an iPad Pro, which has a USB-C connector. I shoot it all in 4K. I copy it right over to one of these, upload it to YouTube off of another computer. We're talking seconds of transfer for most of these videos um, to get from the iPad to the external drive, from the external drive to my, my other computer, my desktop computer and then upload that. So this has been a game changer for me. I get very frustrated by dragging something over and waiting 13 minutes on a USB drive. So just wanted to take a minute and, uh, and give you that kind of public service announcement, just in case you didn't know that there's a better way to do it. There's different tools in the toolbox. This is certainly a great tool. If you're moving, let's say, a couple files, a couple PDF files, a couple movie files or, or you know, music files or something like that from one computer to another, we're talking less than a, a gig of stuff, then yeah, plug this in, get it off the computer, bring it to another computer, no big deal. But if you're going to be moving a bunch of stuff or if you're going to be doing a backup or if you do backups all the time, which you should be, then a drive like this is going to pay for itself in the time that you save. All right, so I took the time to plug in this little rubber grommet, it just slides right on the tip of the drive and pushes right in real easy. It's still, I can just pop that right back out. It's truly tool free. Very convenient to get in and out of this guy here. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys learned something. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. If you like any of these products here, um, I'm going to put some links to this enclosure down in the description below and a couple options on some drives. You could put together a pretty nice uh, backup drive with one of these and a NVMe drive when they go on sale for pretty cheap and save yourself the heartache of, of plugging in a USB external drive or something. So hopefully you like that. If you like this kind of stuff and you want to get more tips and see more geeky stuff, hit that subscribe button too. I thank you so much for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.